car's not turned on. Oops. <laughs> My god, you're just having a fun it, time. Is it supposed to be turned on? Yep. Yes. Well, in, in, in order, order almost to almost hit that biker, <laughs> <laughs> we're like five seconds away from just making that man into your grill. Well, uh, <laughs> despite the technical difficulties, welcome to the third official episode of Draft House Drive. Or just is go, it, it doesn't matter. Or, yeah, I'm oh, almost got rear ended by a truck. Just, oh, no, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. okay, cool. If you were to move, you would have I swear, moved. guys, I am a lot better driver than this. <laughs> I'm a better driver because I have a license. Yeah, Quentin <laughs> just got his license today. Bro, I shit you Happy not. Happy 16th birthday. I shit you not. After taking my test, the person said that I was one of the best drivers they've had, ever had in the, in the car. <laughs> You've and had I was a lot like, of practice. No, because I didn't start <laughs> practicing driving until about two months ago when I bought my car. Oh, dang. February. You know, I remember it was like, we went to Kane's on like, what was it? it must have been like the day before our graduation and like you showed me your uh, permit the yep. one that you had, that, and then you said that it was expired yeah it was expired i had to renew i actually had to renew my permit and from then until now it's been like what 10 months or something like eight months or yeah so? no because i renewed it uh in then, yeah i'm just in saying august i'm just saying since then you still haven't gotten your license until today yep i just yeah. got my license today all right also for those of you who are extra perceptive and notice a third voice in the car with us today welcome our friend uh, casey onto the hey. show he's a special hey, guest and our literal first subscriber on YouTube. Yeah, I am. I, I love your guys' show. I love it so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's I've, I've told Brett this, that like, if you get to the point in your show and you're just like wondering, oh, is this show worth it? Like, should we keep doing it? Keep doing it just for me. Because I love it so much. I will do that. Gladly. Oh, man. Oh, but today we're taking Casey on a trip. We're going to make him go see Army of Darkness, a movie that came out in 1992 and has a very, very like rabbit, I wouldn't call it rabbit, but like a cult following. It is amazing. It is Beautiful. truly amazing. And Casey knows jack all about it, except for a gif we posted on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. I know absolutely nothing about that, it. That's, that's the best way to walk into this movie. Because really? the way that this movie was found is this was the first quote-unquote horror movie that my dad showed me, besides <laughs> The Thing. He showed me this first, and then he showed me The Thing, and then, then I had nightmares for the rest of my life. But... <laughs> This movie is truly one of the greatest masterpieces of stupid in the world. I don't tell him that. I was trying to get him to think it was serious. Oh, oh well. Is it stupid? No, it's serious, I swear. Is it seriously stupid? It's serious. Okay. It's stupidly serious. Like, exactly. The, the, the first image that I had in my mind was like an angels versus demons kind of thing, right? Yeah, but then that. when when Brett told me that it was made in 1992, I like I don't know, something went wrong and I thought it might have like been made in like the 50s or the 60s. <laughs> I guess I like misunderstood. <laughs> And then I figured they might have not had like the the I don't know the budget or like yeah the budget or like I, I thought that yeah the special effects to be able to do it and then I thought maybe it's like a Hitler thing and like a Nazi thing where it's like a metaphorical oh argument and then and then and then I realized wait that's really really that's a really dumb thought and then the image I had in my and then. Uh, Brett posted that gif and it was a skull, so now I'm thinking maybe it's like an army yeah. that came back from the dead. It was, it was a gif of a skeleton from the movie playing a, like a thigh bone as a flute. It is a literal skin yeah. flute. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't have a skin. It's a bone flute, whatever. It's, it's just blowing on the bone. I don't care. And, uh, oh, it don't says, say that. It says angry duding. Oh, okay, so you're telling me not to play blowing on the bone. I'm just, I'm just... Let's go through the other things you don't want me to say, like diddling the kittles. <laughs> I'm sorry. That. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm gonna fucking on, say I diddle kittles all day long. <laughs> this is our podcast, goddammit. I'm sorry. If you don't like it, we'll kick you I'm out. Sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. Don't keep me right now. And we're going on the damn highway. <laughs> okay, alright. You can say whatever you want, but like, I, was, I, I meant don't say it as in like, I recognize the innuendo. That's it. Yeah, I meant. What that. innuendo? It's just it's diddling kittles. No, I meant of blowing the bone. Oh, blowing the bone? Just blowing the bone? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. Alright, okay. Oh, well, obviously spanking the monkey too, huh? Spanking the monkey. Yeah, this movie is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I'm I'm the one who introduced it to Brett. Yeah, and I went in completely blind, and I was blown away because it is it is beautiful. It is it a is glorious a work movie. of art. <laughs> okay, so today this today I thought for this podcast, considering the movie we're going into, I thought we should talk about irrational fears that we uh, have, yes, yes. like things that we're scared of that make no sense. So, who wants to start? Uh, I got a good one. Oh, no, actually, no, Casey has a good one. He, was, Casey, he told going. me, so, like, a synopsis. The thing is, um, I... Okay, so it was an irrational fear that I had for most of my life, mm. and then I've gotten over it. Yeah. And it was an irrational fear of dogs. Like, okay. I was deathly afraid of dogs. Like, I, I couldn't be near dogs when I was younger. And the reason why is because uh, one time, 
I was at like, I must have been like five or six. I was really young and I was at a friend's house and that friend had like a fully grown Dalmatian dog, right? Yeah. So big fucking dog. It was a big dog, yeah. And you're a little baby boy. Yeah, and um, I was, yeah, exactly I was. Little baby. I was, I was a little chubby ball. And so I was walking in the hallway and the dog was following me and it bit me in the butt. Probably because yep. I thought you were like a shoe toy. Yeah, probably. And then it hurt so much and I like, I cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, keep in mind I was like six or seven yeah. and so like that really really scarred me for life that was a really traumatic incident and yeah. because of that like I couldn't like be near dogs and then the reason why I got over it is actually because of uh, one of my best friends, Grant Salter. Yeah, who was we mentioned. dropped his name on the show before. Yeah, but yeah, the exactly. guy who taught me how to dress cacti. It, oh, that's right, exactly. <laughs> 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 exactly, I remember so that. stupid ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, we would hang out a lot and then I would go to his house. And he has two dogs, Zach and Zoe, right? Yeah. And so I, I, initially I would be like deathly afraid of them. Like he would have to like tell them to like go to another part of the house. But then as the more and more I went there, the more and more I, re I like played and interacted with them. And it, they were just like the sweetest, like greatest dogs in the yeah. world. And so now I'm not afraid of dogs as much anymore. That's good. See, with me, I, my, my, one of my irrational fears, yet again, I grew out of it. I wasn't mentally scarred or psychologically scarred, I was literally physically scarred. <laughs> because when I was three, little dipshit bread on grandpa's farm decided it was a good idea to play with the rooster. And I was chasing chickens around. Uh, the the big cock in the pen was not having it. <laughs> and it was like, prison. fuck nah, you ain't messing with my hands. <laughs> it's and like prison. Just, it just scratches the shit out of my face yeah. with his talents. And three-year-old me was like, Bee! <laughs> I'm bleeding everywhere. Um, I was just. Uh, my mom was like, "Fuck!" And uh, yeah, and my grandpa killed that rooster, and we ate it for dinner. <laughs> Not that night, but uh, still. yeah. And so I, I wasn't. I wasn't happy for a long time. In the end, and, one. and I still have that scar to this day. It's right across my face on oh. my cheek. But uh, I, I like to think it was I got it from a cool battle, and that's what I'll tell chicks when I pick them up in the future. Yeah, yeah you see this car? I got mugged in Detroit, and no, I just got attacked by a rooster. The way you told that story was way better than the way I just told my story. Yeah, like you were like we. Oh man, like me, I was just like, yeah, I got bit on the butt and I was scarred for life. And then you, you were like, oh yeah, the big cock in the head wasn't yeah. like the big cock in the the barn wasn't having it. Okay. But, but that's not all, because yeah. it actually relates back to my brother a bit. Because when my brother was three, and this was the uh, dipshit who peed in my, <laughs> my friend's laundry basket. I remember that. And and your basket. <laughs> allegedly pooped my basket. There's, there's no, Sorry, there's no hard so evidence. So allegedly. But uh, apparently, we were at, we used to live in an apartment, yep. and uh, the landladies owned a very sweet golden retriever. Yep. And shit stained Nicholas thought it was a good idea to <laughs> pull the dog's tail. <laughs> Jake! Hark! Right across the face. <laughs> and yeah, now he still has that scar. We have near identical scars from different things. Wait, did he get bitten? No, or it was scratched? just bit. Like, okay. it just dog. Yeah. And funny thing, uh, same thing happened to my little brother Dominic, also with the Golden Retriever. We're not very smart <laughs> friends. We're not very smart people. With the animals. Yeah, not with the animals. And I think that's about it for like my greatest fears that you I grew told out me of. Cyanide and apples. Yeah, you told cyanide, me. apples, and this is a more recent one. Like, literally, like, last week. Yeah. Uh, I have a weird fear now of cyanide and almonds. Because it, because it turns out almonds have a trace amount of cyanide in their rinds. Okay. Also, apples have a trace amount of cyanide in their seeds. Yes. I knew about this before. It didn't yeah. phase me because it was such a small amount. Yeah. But it turns out in order to, like in jewelry, to plate gold onto metals, the best way to get gold to plate on something is to make it have a cyanide bath. Straight up, just dipped in cyanide. Okay. And it turns out, old fashioned jewelers, if you smelled almonds, get the fuck out of the building because that is hydrocyanic gas and that'll kill you real dead, real fast. So I was working with that shit in my chem lab, yep. going, oh fuck. I'm gonna die. <laughs> And th that was me every day in chem lab. But yeah. also, fun fact, I nearly injected hot acid in my lab partner's face one day. I think you told me about yeah, that. Yeah, because hard. we were heating up a test tube and it had concentrated hydrochloric acid in there. And I'm talking concentrated. It had a pH, it had a negative pH. Did not know that was possible until I did the math. But a negative pH. Damn. That'll melt you. Just straight up just melt you into a puddle. <laughs> and my lab partner was like, 
and it's supposed to be shaking, and I'm just like, eh, whatever. And we just like, let's just face it away from ourselves in case. Two minutes later, fuck! <laughs> acid all over it! Fucking acid all over the lab table! And we were just like, uh, t teach! <laughs> we, we, got a, we got a problem here. Prof, and, yeah. Help. Prof, <laughs> help, please. Acid yeah. everywhere, and we're just like, uh, luckily nothing like, none, none, of, none of the glass shatter just shot out, just yeah. ejected. Oh, yeah. Right. That's, insane. Yeah. that's insane. Yeah, there was all that. And that's my more recent fears yeah. of, um, of just cyanide. And there was another one where it's just like mascots, but I blame, like, I don't blame Five Nights at Freddy's. No, Dennison was fucking <laughs> terrifying. Oh, do you mean the bee? Yes, the, the bee. bee. Yes. Where his God. mouth is like half of his face. I didn't, and ca also I didn't care about that. I care about like, him looking constipated. Or do like him pumping or giving birth to the football team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was between that and I'm going to give away the university I go to along with, do uh, you mind if I out you, Casey? Here? Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We go to UTD. Oh, and God. the mascot for UTD is T Mock the Comets. He's the scariest <laughs> motherfucker I've ever seen. He is in my goddamn life. terrifying. <laughs> Look him up. He's up there with Brutus the Buckeye in terms of goddamn <laughs> horrifying. He looks like the most demented version of Barney ever. <laughs> like, it is really bad. Oh, it is I've horrifying. A, I, I, like, during Welcome Week, like, I got, like, a free flash drive of uh, of Timok, yeah, oh, and God. it was like a cartoon version. Oh and God! I was like, this is the scariest fucking thing I've ever seen in I my life. I want that. Like, you, do you really? Do you really? I, I would love to have that. I'll, it's back at Quinton's house. I'll give it to you <laughs> if you want. Okay, it's so, in my car at Quinton's house. Okay, so before we go on to talking about my irrational fears, which is going to be a very long conversation because I have a lot of them. <laughs> but um, we'll go over yours until we get to the theater because I have a story. But, about uh, my grandpa when I come back. Oh, I just God. I'm talking about myself at a release oh, my grandpa. Talking about mascots, I just want to say the story of... So in uh, Amarillo, their local college or whatever, their mascot is a sock. A sock? <laughs> They're the Amar Amarillo socks. Or that is if almost I'm as horrible as a Louisiana State fighting okra. But, fighting but, yeah. So... When this team, I can't remember if it was when they just started or they re redesigned their mascot costume or something. Oh, Let's say, sucks. so they redesigned the costume where they just start having a mascot. And the way it is redesigned is the whole sock costume goes like goes all the way down to about the waist. And then there's this giant protruding <laughs> foot of the sock right where his waist is. So it just looks like this sock has a massive chub for everyone in the stands and on the field. It's not even full mass, it's like I, quarter mass. Kid you not. <laughs> That mascot lasted one game, <laughs> and then they were like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I just realized what we put out on the field. They wanted to know what the football team was packing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was baseball. They weren't Green it Bay. Baseball. It was a baseball oh, yeah. mascot. It was baseball. It was baseball. Oh, but, but the only Sox mascot I can excuse for baseball is the Boston Red Sox, but that's yeah, not it. That's but, because they grandfathered in. It was the 30s when they came up with that mascot. But so, I mean, my irrational fears, it, it, it is such a long list. I'm going to start from the younger, from younger and then go on to older. Okay. So when I was younger, I was terrified of ghosts. Oh, and that's that's boy. I'm talking like extremely terrified, where I had to sleep under blankets and all that kind of stuff. But... It, so it's understandable for ages like seven, like four to eight, maybe ten years old. Yeah, I if you're putting on, uh, that's reason. Putting yeah. on length. Yeah, I didn't stop being scared of ghosts until I was like seventeen. What? <laughs> I was, I could, I could what? not. I was so scared. Seriously? I, I did not stop sleeping with a light on until. Well, that's because the last movie you watched with ghosts in it, you turned into spoon mode. Yeah, yeah first. I'm sure paranormal like Yeah, that paranormal that. like That did not help. That <laughs> did, that lengthened it by a lot of wait, years. Wait, so did you like? Okay, wait. Was there like a break in between, like eight years old? Nope. You? Nope, no, I was. It just it so was it was Here's the thing: is it morphed from ghosts to murderous ghosts because of uh, me and my dad would watch Catch Law and Order. Order. Okay. And the, the and Dateline. An eight-year-old should not watch Dateline. <laughs> might I add? Dateline, Nightline, all of it. Don't let your children watch these shows because it made me convinced that I would go to bed and I would wake up with a murderer in my room like that. And I was seriously like terrified of this for the longest time. Yes. But after that, after the ghosts is one thing that I'm, that I'm still kind of scared of is bugs. 
I am scared of cockroaches. Oh, bugs. Yeah. I thought you said books. So oh, bugs. bugs. Cockroaches <laughs> and all, all, all things. No. Spiders scare the shit out of me. Oh, but I love the spiders. But here's the thing: is they don't scare me in front of people. In front of people, I suddenly grow like an extra set of testicles, <laughs> and like I'll see a spider and I will like punch it and kill it. But if I'm by myself, for example, I was at my Taekwondo studio and I'm sitting in the back of the studio and this cockroach appears out of nowhere. I start flailing like a three-year-old girl. I'm like, oh my god! And I'm like throwing flip-flops at it, hoping that it will die. Dude, and those fuckers can survive nukes. Until, can't do shit. until eventually I pick up this giant box of boards and just drop it on the bug. That's pretty effective. And I pick it up and it's squished. And I'm like, okay, it's good. And I pick it up with a paper towel throw it away. It starts moving in my hand. And I'm like, oh shit! And I throw it in the toilet flush I'm like fuck you and then it goes down the toilet and I'm like okay we're good we're okay, good if you, if you don't like bugs what are you feeling on nope ropes what do you mean snacks Sna oh snakes snakes are noodles snakes are noodles, noodles. Snakes are noodles. Snakes are noodles. <laughs> nope ropes <laughs> what about armor, what about uh, armor puppies lizards or doggos armor puppies <laughs> lizards yes lizards Liz snakes and wizards I had what a li pet lizard lizards, <laughs> lizards are fine snakes I can get but snakes Liz are puppies lizards I'm fine with I had a pet lizard it died what about long necks because my dad put bleach inside its water but that's a story for another day but <laughs> <laughs> where the hell are you coming up with these names I get them mostly from reddit yep yeah, yeah, really dumb side of reddit yeah like rare but, puppers. So after bugs, my most recent fear is the ocean. Yeah. And okay, I understand. That. So you guys experienced this with me over spring trip. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got into the ocean and I was legitimately terrified okay. that a shark was going to be eaten. <laughs> because when I was a child, I was invested in sharks. That was my favorite thing to read about. I wouldn't read Nancy Drew or the Hardy Boys or A to Z Mysteries or whatever. The Fuck young fiction is Marvin offering Redpost, these days. Marvin Magic Treehouse. I don't remember Marvin Redpost, and I remember Magic Treehouse. I never read one of those books in my entire life. That shit was my jam. Marvin Redpost was so good. I loved but I would read every single book of sharks that I could get my hands on, and it fascinated me. I was like, oh my god, this is so goddamn cool. Look at this shark. It's gonna fly out of the goddamn water, eat that little goddamn seal. <laughs> yeah, and that evolved into me being fucking terrified of them <laughs> later on in life. Like that I, seal could be me. <laughs> you exactly. Like I will get into, I will get into lakes where there is no possibility of there being a shark, and I'm like, a leech is gonna crawl up my dick hole and eat me from the inside. Fun fact, that actually happened to me. What the I was hell? In lake, I was swimming in Lake Erie, and a leech went oh right on my face. Oh like, like, my like God. Stand by me, right? Like the movie Stand by Me. Yep. They yes. go in the water, and the leeches all attack them. Yep. Oh, mm -mm. Well, it wasn't leech; it was a lamprey. Thank you for reassuring my fear. I ain't going in no goddamn water. <laughs> to be fair, that's only Lake Erie, and which is so polluted, the Lorax trashed it, and uh, it's also so polluted, all the fish have AIDS. I don't believe in tourism video, oh bro. God, I don't even. I don't even care. I'm never going in a lake again because I am seriously terrified that a leech is just gonna bite my dick off. And then the worst thing is like when a fish like kind of crawls, like it kind of like slithers against your leg. Yes. And you're, like, oh my so god. Scared, you we no that over is. spring trip. I was swimming next to people, and one of their oh. foot like slid by my leg, and I went, oh fuck, because I <laughs> thought a shark was gonna bite my leg off. It's that funny you actually mentioned getting your dick bit off too, because that was my other irrational fear that I wrote down on a list. But, yep. fun, but according to you and a few other people, my dick was already bit off. You're right, it was. <laughs> but I, got, I went into a car crash with my ex. And, Roadhead. Yeah. <laughs> so, the story goes, according to these chuckle fucks, that I was getting some Roadhead. Straight up. And I got into a car crash. <laughs> yep. Right, right <laughs> off. So. Oh. Uh, my, my ex bought me a 3DS XL a couple days later to replace my XL. Yep, that's what it is. That would, that's exactly what it is. But my last irrational fear, and this is like the most irrational. Number one is I am scared that whilst a girl goes down on me, she's going to sneeze <laughs> and just teeth together, bite off the pen penis. Oh. But this one, this is my most irrational fear because there is literally no possibility of it ever happening. But it is still scares me so much. I am scared to death that I will be consummating with a female. And you know in like sci-fi movies- Wait, you say cell her oh, clown you mean, hole. Do you, mean like, do you mean like the movie Teeth? No, no, that that's oh, that's okay. another, that's a whole nother thing. Right. But like, I, you know in sci-fi movies, like Star Wars, where they have the doors and they close in like 12 different directions to lock down? that's yeah. gonna happen? I'm scared that's gonna happen with a vagina when the penis <laughs> is there. And it's gonna turn my dick into eel sushi. 
Just oh. thunk, 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 thunk. It closed in like 12 different directions, and then, 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 yeah. That is the dumbest oh, thing I've ever heard You're in my life. You're absolutely right, and that's why it's being said on this podcast. Oh, I right. got, I got one more thing before we go. Yeah. Fuck. Well, one, I gotta find out where the draft house is, and two, I, I had a moment of true fear mm-hmm. earlier this week because yes. you mentioned sneezing, right? Yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was bringing myself to Pound Town. And I was right at the again. peak of... We're talking about masturbation again. Yes. But this one's actually relevant. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was at the peak of Mount Fuck, and <laughs> I, I had to sneeze. You got and to I, the summit. Yeah, but it was like a slow building one where it's just like... <laughs> and the sneeze? Yeah, so I felt oh, the same sensation. I thought you were talking about the finish. Yeah, I, I felt the same <laughs> sensation in my dick that I felt in my nose. And I was like, what's going to happen first? What's going to happen first? Fuck, 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 fuck! Two. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> well, that means that means you were like two orifices away from a full climax. Yeah, but no, <laughs> I felt gross all over. <laughs> oh, yeah, then so you had horrible. to do double duty on cleanup that yeah. day, didn't you? Ugh, I, I had to use tissues in its conventional sense and in the uh, in the slap in the Jimmy sense. <laughs> slap in the Jimmy. Slap in the Jimmy. <laughs> going to pound that. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Well, enough of us being uh, total chuckle fucks. Oh, man. We'll see you guys after the flick.